The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 10F. If a comet has not the orbit that astronomers have predicted, perturbed. If, like Halley's Comet, it be late, even a year late, perturbed. When a train is an hour late, we have small opinion of the prediction of timetables. When a comet's a year late, all we ask is that it be explained. We hear of the inflation and arrogance of astronomers. My own acceptance is not that they are imposing upon us, that they are requiting us. For many of us priests no longer function to give us seeming rapport with perfection, infallibility, the positive absolute. Astronomers have stepped forward to fill a vacancy with glossy phantomosity, but in our acceptance, with a higher approximation to substantiality than had the attenuations that preceded them, I should say, myself, that all that we call progress is not so much response to urge, as it is response to hiatus, or if you want something to grow somewhere, dig out everything else in its area. So I have to accept that the positive assurances of astronomers are necessary to us, or the blunderings, evasions and disguises of astronomers would never be tolerated. That, given such latitude as they are permitted to take, they could not be very disastrously mistaken. Suppose the comet called Halley's had not appeared. Early in 1910, a far more important comet than the anemic luminosity said to be Halley's appeared. It was so brilliant that it was visible in daylight. The astronomers would have been saved anyway. If this other comet did not have the predicted orbit, perturbation. If you're going to Coney Island and predict there'll be a special kind of pedal on the beach, I don't see how you can disgrace yourself if some other pedal will do just as well, because the feeble thing said to have been seen in 1910 was no more in accord with the sensational descriptions given out by astronomers in advance than is a pale pedal with a brick red boulder. I predict that next Wednesday, a large chinaman, in evening clothes, will cross Broadway, at 42nd Street, at 9 p.m., he doesn't, but a tubercular jack in a sailor's uniform does cross Broadway, at 35th Street, Friday, at noon. Well, a jack is a perturbed chinaman, and clothes are clothes. I remember the terrifying predictions made by the honest and credulous astronomers, who must have been themselves hypnotized, or they could not have hypnotized the rest of us, in 1909. Wills were made. Human life might be swept from this planet. In quasi-existence, which is essentially Hibernian, that would be no reason why wills should not be made. The less excitable of us did expect at least some pretty good fireworks. I have to admit that it is said that, in New York, the light was seen in the sky. It was about as terrifying as the scratch of a match on the seat of some breaches half a mile away. It was not on time. Though I have heard that a faint nebulosity, which I did not see, myself, though I looked when I was told to look, was seen in the sky. It appeared several days after the time predicted. A hypnotized host of imbeciles of us, told to look up at the sky. We did, like a lot of pointers hypnotized by a partridge. The effect. Almost everybody now swears that he saw Halley's Comet, and that it was a glorious spectacle.